Let's dedicate this video to explain a part of the utilitarian model we have defended up until now, the philosophic or eudaimonic calculus. Our eudaimonic calculations are not as precise as the philosophic calculus introduced by Bentham, nor do they aim to be. The objective is just to roughly sketch all the possible foreseeable outcomes of an action, and approximately quantify their contributions to the overall happiness. There is, though, a specific focus. In considering the expected amount of happiness that a certain action can cause, we give explicit importance to how the action interfaces with societal rules and laws. If a consequence of an action erodes the faith in a rule that produces positive utility, then we will single out this negative utility component in the calculations. If it erodes the faith in a rule that produces negative utility, we single out the positive utility generated. The total erosion component is the product of how much suffering or happiness the erosion of the rule could cause, times the chance or percentage of blame that the action would lead to the erosion of the rule. In essence, the framework is act consequentialist. But why this focus on rules? As explained previously, well thought out rules are of tantamount importance for the production of happiness, but they are in a continuous tension with the utility principle. The reason for this tension is that rules are necessarily generalizations. That is, there are cases in which rules do not provide happiness, but because they do provide happiness in the majority of cases, they are still way worth it to implement. As an example, take the rule that you can't vote until you are over 18. There are rare cases where a person under 18 can be more critically equipped to vote in an election than older individuals. In those cases, the rule is doing a disservice to the underage person and to the community. Nonetheless, the rule is very useful in a lot of other cases, since usually people under 18 don't have the best understanding of politics. So, continuing with this case, would our eudaimonic calculus single out a positive utility component in the calculations if an underage politically savvy boy were to try to illegally vote anyway? Well, no, we lied. Although he is eroding a rule in a case where it produces suffering, the effort and resources we would need to change the rule are greater than what could be gained by adding this specific exception. That is, to be able to enforce such a rule, we would need to devise some test to discern which underage persons are equipped to vote and which aren't. The test would then have to be applied every election to all underage individuals, etc. etc. Now, we could quite surely do all of this, but the cost of the entire operation wouldn't probably be worth it. All this to say that before we were pedagogically imprecise. What we should have said is that the erosion component of the rule is positive when the rule is producing suffering, and changing it would not cause more suffering than keeping it in place. Also to keep in mind is that breaking a rule is not the only way to erode its power. Laws can change with no rule breaking at all, and when breaking a rule that one wish is gone, he would be wise to signal it. Otherwise, other individuals might misinterpret his actions. A little aside, with rules we mean everything from codified laws to societal pressures. In fact, the societal pressure is simply a norm for which transgression is punished with social shaming. Let's give the eudaimonic calculus we are using a test case. Suppose one is at a red traffic light and is late to buy a gift for his child. Looking at both directions of the intersection, the road is empty, so he decides to run the light, and proceeds onwards. The eudaimonic calculus would be a positive utility component for having shortened the driver's waiting time, making him happier, but also a negative utility component for the chance of having contributed to eroding the traffic light rule. Eroding a societal rule is not to be taken lightly. There are cities in the world where the traffic light rule is practically completely eroded, causing a big loss of aggregate utility. In our framework, this negative utility would be repartitioned between all the persons that contributed to the erosion of the rule. On the flip side, if a citizen in Nazi Germany smuggled Jews out of the country, he would be eroding a rule that brings suffering. So the erosion component of utilitarian calculus would be positive. Of course, other considerations would be included in the eudaimonic calculus. So how we determine the sign of a component should be clear. Instead, the magnitude of the erosion component depends on a number of factors. How important is the rule, how much it is eroded by, what are the chances of the erosion happening, etc, etc. It is hard to quantify. Briefly, we can say that it depends on the circumstances. For example, running the light during the day, when there is a higher chance of unseen cars approaching the intersection, and there are potentially high number of witnesses to the breaking of the rule, would be worse than running the light at night. Additionally, present in the magnitude of the negative utility from the erosion of the rule, there may also be a self-influence component. 
Once you decide you are willing to erode the societal rule, you may biologically be more likely to do it again. At the end of the day, we will have to deal with the magnitude on a case-by-case -case basis. Despite its many shortcomings that we will discuss, the simple, naive, little guide for the calculations will help illuminate our thinking when dealing with some of the most notorious counterexamples in future videos.